Um, so I'd like to welcome you all. Um, we've been uh, holding a kind of annual briefing at this time of year, although lockdowns have affected us in the past. And I hope that you find this uh, virtual one uh, very useful. Um, we we want to give everybody the chance to answer questions, but it may be that we don't get to them all by 7.30. So um, this, this annual briefing is a bit different because um, after seven years and a bit, I'm standing down at the end of the month. And that means that today you get one, one leader now and the new leader as well, who, because subject to the council meeting, which is still a, a part of the pro, an important part of the decision making, um, we're expecting to have a, a meeting on the 30th of November and um, for there to be a new leader who could well be Anna Smith. And Anna is on the call. Um, today, so to see you. so I'm fortunate that I have a, a really uh, strong and um, hardworking and a excellent uh, successor. Um, so, uh, so we, we've got an hour and a half. We'll take a bit under half of that, um, probably about 35 minutes, and we hope that we get um, plenty of time for questions. We've also got four mm -hmm. questions already. So we, um, we will be answering those. So um, what do we want to cover? Um, so I, I, I'll cover- Recording in progress. Oh, and I must mention that. Um, so uh, I'll have a couple of other um, items to mention in the next overhead. So um, we, we are recording this and we hope that that's useful to you. It's also in case uh, other community organizations uh, weren't able to make it and they get the benefit of it um, and the slide deck is also going to be available um, should it be of interest so um, this is what this is what we're going to cover um, we're going to cover our priorities and I hope your priorities for uh, the city and a few reflections on the last year we've obviously been working hard and particularly our council staff have um, as have a lot of your organizations so one of the things to thank people for is just how much pulling together that we achieved during COVID and how that protected particularly isolated people and people who needed help. So a bit of reflection and our uh, uh, esteemed colleague, Andrew Lim, who's head of our strategy and partnerships has got a brief survey. So if you've got your mobile phones handy, um, please do, um, uh, see if you if you've got a smartphone than some of our councillors, uh, then uh, hopefully you'll be able to take part in that that survey. It's not compulsory. Um, Anna will talk about our partnerships with uh, community organisations, and I'll try and share, um, although it may be after the event, um, a, a, a stunning piece of work that Transition Cambridge have done, where they've mapped over a hundred of the bigger organisations in the city. And I just think um, we are so fortunate in this city to have such a wealth of community input and organisations. And I just want to try and share that one way or another. If you uh, search for that, that piece of work, Transition Cambridge have grouped them. And it's just a very um, visual and powerful reminder of how many organisations we have. Um, and it's then going to talk about our Cambridge um, uh, in terms of how we're looking to expand that joint work with the community sector and other partners. I'll talk about the money side. Um, we have a severe financial challenge, including that we're seven and a half million pounds light because the government didn't refund a lot of the costs and income that we incurred, uh, income losses during COVID. Uh, a bit on planning and transport, and then it's it's over to you. We've got We've had four questions, two from Cambridge PPF and two from the Friends of Midsummer Common, covering broadly issues of planning, of biodiversity, um, and also the concern of uh, quite a few residents at the moment of overspeeding and uncontrolled electric two wheelers of all sorts of varieties. So I'll move on. Um, a few uh, tips here. So um, we, we obviously want you to speak and ask questions later, but if you can turn off your mic if you're not speaking. Um, the chat, we will um, be following the chat. So if you do have a question, um, 
please add it if you want to in the chat or you can choose to ask it later on but if you if you are add it in the chat then um then we'll be in a position to uh answer it and there may be some answers provided uh in the chat but but we we will give everybody who puts a question in the chat and uh the opportunity to ask it or to follow up anything that's been put in the chat in response um we're running to 7 30. Uh, if we don't get to your questions and i'm afraid uh in a past session that we we did have to sort of have extra time it's it's much more difficult to do that when we're not sitting in the warm leather seats of the guild hall so if if for any reasons the last few questions don't get reached then we'll be really keen to answer them as you can see there's 54 people on this call so um we may not get to every question um but there's a case for having this more often particularly if we do it online because it does give a great opportunity to discuss issues so have your mobile ready because we're going to do a couple of questions fairly soon and as you will have got a message the meeting is being recorded um, so i'll see if i can get my system to work um so a brief reminder of the our priorities for cambridge and also what, what we've been working on through the last year so um, uh, we've had a, a significant effort um, in tackling poverty and inequality and we do think that assisted by volunteers community groups that during particularly that harsh and hard period when uh, covid was such an unknown threat and a lot of people really did need assistance and support that, that the voluntary spirit was there in our city the leaders of the world's nations may not have sorted out uh, 1.5 degree maximum uh, temperature rise uh, we obviously are working hard not just to sort out our own uh, uh, emissions but to work with both uh, industry uh, education organizations community groups um, we do take the climate emergency and the wider biodiversity crisis incredibly seriously and we will be working particularly on our local response. Uh, we, have, we have built over, or we're in the process of building council homes with over 500 started. And with a lot of help from yourselves, um, we've seen a major reduction in rough sleeping and homelessness. Um, plus there's been various measures on that. And inevitably, because of the financial challenges, there's a lot of work going on at the city council over the coming period, um, both on reducing how much it costs for us to run your services um, but also uh, the issue of recovery so i think um, as of today we've got um, probably the first economic development officer employed by the city council in the last 15 years and that is because we've both got a lot of people who uh, need help skills um, a lot of our sectors didn't do so well including the city centre and we've got the need for us also um, to help certain uh, businesses and so on so we've got a particular focus working with South Cambridgeshire and the excellent work the combined authorities done on some of this um, over the next period of time so in addition to that I've obviously covered some of my main thoughts um, we, we COVID is not over um, we are an enhanced uh, re response area um, we've taken a safety first approach um, we clearly have the nhs is under huge pressure um, we've had up until recently 60 beds at Addenbrooke's taken up with covid um, patients and um, so the nhs is under severe stress if we had a flu epidemic it will get even harder um, so in addition to other reasons for protecting people and getting everybody's boosters and in ensuring that we get the message across um, we will not stop taking COVID seriously until it's over um, we, we have been fortunate some of our sectors have done quite well um, even in 2020 which was a really tough year so there is a, a sense of that and part of why I call the place a city of considerable magic is um, it, 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 we have the qualities and we want to protect the best of those um, and that will come into bits on the plan um, it is about looking after everybody 
but it's and it's also about working together. I think we've got a far better relation set of relationships than I would have been able to say a year ago or back. And the fact that South Cambridgeshire, the County Council, us and the combined authority can work together on issues will make a big difference. And we've just got a, a spirit of cooperation and it's one of the threads that May and Nick Johnson champions. Um, and that also helps in winning uh, government funding. So we didn't get, we got virtually nothing out of the last budget, but we welcome, we welcome the fact that we got 30 electric buses being added to the local fleet, particularly on the number twos um, and the park and ride buses. Um, but we do believe that Cambridge does need to have a number of its problems addressed, including digital, water, renewable energy, just basically decent uh, energy networks for our area. Um, and last but not least, I put on this slide that i be handing over to a new leader. We'll have a special council meeting um, and that will occur on the 30th of November. So uh, I will unshare my screen um, using the benefits of modern technology, hopefully. And Andrew Lim will step in quickly um, with um, uh, some guidance about Menti. Did I should have kept that um, page up, Andrew, or are you able to guide? Mm -hmm. The code's on the other screen as well, Lewis, so it'll be fine either way. So I'm just encouraging people to log on to menti.com if you're smarter than me with a smartphone. Okay, so as Lou says, um, if, if you want to take part in um, uh, just a quick kind of um, uh, sense check of uh, people's priorities and uh, uh, ideas about the city, um, if you've got um, uh, a smartphone and you just go to a browser and put in www.menti.com, and then when you get there, if you put in the code 30119623, hopefully that will bring up this question and you'll get a chance to put in your three words. And as Anna says, you can also use your computer browser. If, you've got if you're smart enough to use two browsers at once, by all means, please do that. So is this a free choice of words, Andrew? Absolutely, anything that anybody wants to kind of uh, say what they think the challenges will be for Cambridge over the next five years. And the ones that, that, that people most use will um, grow in size. Um, I'm sure people would have seen a word cloud before, hopefully. Um, and it just gives a flavour of the kind of things that people are thinking are likely to be challenges in the city and uh, help us inform what we want to prioritise. So you can see how it changes as more people take part. But some core themes coming through already around poverty and inequality, as, as I think we know, and transport, which has been a theme in Cambridge at least all of the 50 years I've lived here, and, and climate increasingly in people's minds, but also biodiversity. So some familiar themes there, but it's helpful to have it reiterated to us and also to kind of see the, the changes over time. So, I'll just give it a few more seconds to see if anybody else wants to kind of put their words in. Very strong theme around the environment. Really, really important for everyone. But also some other themes around, um, obviously, uh, the inequality side of things and, and healthcare, which is very much in our minds at the moment as well. Well, thank you for, for that one. So the next one, if I move the, the slide on to the next question, is just a slightly different way of framing it. So in five years time, what would you like Cambridge to be like? What, what sort of place would you like to be in? What, what words best sum up the kind of Cambridge you'd like to see? So if you just put those uh, type away um, and enter, submit your words, I'll start appearing on the screen.
So again, I think there's, there's, there's at least two strong themes coming through there, the inclusive, fair, equitable, accessible side of things, and then the uh, sustainable green. Including sustainable forms of transport, obviously, again, very important to people. So very, very clear kind of um, parallel uh, tw twin things there. And obviously they, they, inter they interact and interrelate to each other as well. So social justice, environmental justice broadly coming through, I think is, is your high priorities, I think. But some nice kind of um, themes as well around collaborative, inclusive and so on, um, compassionate. So. That's great. Thank you very much. It was it was simply a kind of uh, an opportunity to give you a chance to contribute this evening and hear everyone's uh, thoughts and uh, ideas and priorities in a, in a quick and light touch kind of way. So that's been really, really helpful. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll stop sharing those. The wonders of technology. So there were some interesting uh, issues there, and Anna, I'm going to hand over to Anna. And obviously, there was a whole range of themes of inclusiveness as well as um, tackling inequality. So over to you, Anna, to talk about some of the initiatives that were on that are underway. Thanks, Lewis. That's great. And I always think they're so powerful those little word clouds because when you start doing them, you think. There's not much we're going to be able to manage with just a few words or phrases here, but actually somehow it, it does bring together those those core words, you know, inclusiveness, anti-poverty, climate, transport coming across really strongly there as well. And Lewis will be saying a little bit more about that later. Um, I think I remember doing this. I don't think it was quite this time last year. I think it was possibly a little bit. I think it was earlier this year actually and looking at the participants list and just that sense of thinking I know almost every name there and I've met almost every person on, on, on the list and because we're all working together um, for the good of our city and I think that sense of really powerful partnerships in Cambridge um, it's one of the reasons that does make us such a special city um, and I wanted to start by saying a huge thank you to everyone here um, the narrative tends to be a lot in the press now that COVID is over. We know it's not. So there's a lot of people here still working to get us through the pandemic. And then there's a lot of people also thinking at the same time about pandemic recovery. And I should also say, I know there are a lot of people in this room who are exhausted. And so I want to really acknowledge that there's been a lot of work that's gone on over the last 18 months. And thank you. Thank you from everybody in Cambridge. Um, just highlighting on this slide, a few of the things that as a city we're either doing or involved in um, to ensure that we really do have that one Cambridge Fair for All. That's been our um, city council's tagline since 2014. And I think it really does sum up what we're all trying to do, what we're all trying to do here this evening. Um, so many of you are participants in our Real Living Wage campaign. Many of you are Real Living Wage employers. And I should say a particular thanks to CCVS who have been really working with us to help us support small charities to become real living wage employers, because that's quite a challenge, actually, some of the, the work that's needed for that. Um, so thank you to CCVS for helping us host some workshops on that. Um, so we're involved in that. We've been involved in joint campaigns with the um, TUC, the Stay Safe at Work Join a Union campaign. And we will be, we're hoping to do a little bit more around that in January, February, sure, yeah. well, oh, I think that was just someone accidentally not on mute for a second. Um, we're hoping to do a little bit more around that in February as well, and really trying to help people think about the benefits that many of us know that um, being part of a union gives to to our to our workforces. Um, we're very proud to be part of the Cambridge Food Poverty Alliance, working together for food justice, and I'm really sorry. Sorry, can people make sure they're all on mute, please? I'm getting a little bit of feedback. So if you just check that you're on mute, that would be brilliant. Um, I'm afraid some of the organisations there are very, very tiny, but I know that many people will recognise themselves um, as part of that Food Poverty Alliance. We're also part of the Cambridge Digital Partnership. And I did want to say a huge congratulations to Cambridge Online for, for being shortlisted for an award on this at the moment. I hope many of us have voted 
um, for the People's Choice part of that. Um, but the Cambridge Digital Partnership has done so much to get both IT kit and data to people in need, particularly across the last 18 months, but also for many years before that. And the Cambridge Free Poverty Alliance, absolutely core in the work we've been doing around food justice and particularly the pandemic food hubs. Many people here will be recipients of the community grants, around about a million pounds worth of grants given out each year. Um, we try as well to do work to um, in, in, improve the health of the city through initiatives such as our active lifestyle team, that's the Let's Get Moving Cambridge logo there. And of course, tackling poverty and inequality is not just about the um, inequalities that come from poverty, it's also through all the other social inequalities, the inequalities that come through um, disabilities, that come, unfortunately come if you are LGBT plus, or if um, you are black or minority ethnic. So there's so many inequalities in our city. We're very proud to um, sponsor the Cambridge Equality Pledge. And Helen, I don't know if you want to post a link to that pledge and the ability for individuals and organizations to sign to say that they support that pledge. But most of you will know most of this because most of you are a central part of it. And that's absolutely fantastic. And the same is true if we go on to the next slide. Next slide, please. Brilliant. Oh, no, one back. Fantastic. Because we're also working in partnership to tackle the climate and biodiversity crises. Um, so again, we have a few um, logos here as little prompts. You may gather that I, I don't like a lot of words on slides. I like pictures. Um, you'll see, you'll recognise the um, our new climate change strategy, it's definitely worth having a look at that online. There's a lot of really important things there in terms of what we're working on as a city. I'll come to a little bit of that in more detail when we talk about housing. Um, we've been partnering on the claim Cambridge Climate Change Charter. And again, we're encouraging individuals and groups to really sign up to that and to kind of audit their own, our own lifestyles. I, I did that and was had lots of challenges uh, myself around how I could be greener as an individual. But we also appreciate you can't do things alone. We're part of the UK 100 network of um, councils who are particularly committed to challenging the climate and biodiversity crises. We have, and I'm sorry to Councillor Collis that I did not put a link to the draft biodiversity strategy up on the screen here. I do have um, an image of the chalk screen project um, that was led by um, Councillor Thornborough last year. Um, but we're really looking at biodiversity as well. And we're signatories of the Glasgow Food and Climate Declaration. This is um, an international declaration with a group of councils from parish councils right up to kind of um, large cities to put pressure on those governments that came to COP to think about sustainability and food justice right at the heart of what we do, um, because we're very aware that anti-poverty work and climate work go hand in hand. And that's really crucial in the work we're doing. Um, we had some of the last EU funding that was gonna come our way, sadly, as a council to um, our tree canopy project, part of the Two Seas project, which has given us the ability to not only plant large number of trees across the city, but to do some research into the power of the tree canopy as well. And of course, we will be part of the Cambridge and Peterborough's Combined Authority Independent Commission on Climate. Those are a few um, examples there work we're doing, but we're doing that again. That has to be in collaboration, working together. And crucially, we are intending to reduce our own emissions to net zero by 2030, but we're going to need to work together to ensure that we can do that as a city as well, because wouldn't it be wonderful? Really, we only have those nine years. Let's do what we can as a city to get our emissions across the whole city down as well. Next slide, please. Um, and this is really the third part of the picture. Could argue this is part of our anti-poverty work, but it's also a really key part of our um, climate work too. We are building new homes. Many have started on site. The um, picture on the top left of the screen there is just from the other day and it was the handover of the first keys, including the key to a um, fully accessible um, house 
at our Cromwell Road development, where we are building 118, I think the number is, council homes on the former Ridgeon site in partnership um, with Hill as part of the Cambridge Investment Partnership. And the work we're doing is starting to get recognised. Um, you can see um, some of our team there at the Inside, recent Inside Housing Awards collecting their awards there. And at the bottom of the site, you can also see a bird's eye view of our depot site, the other side of the railway line to the Cromwell Road site, with more council houses coming on stream there. And we're really committed to making that as green as we possibly can. We're looking at retrofitting our existing council stock. We're also, um, the picture I have here is um, very excited to see how many electric charging points part of the new Cromwell Road site. But we're also trying to build um, passive house and eco homes wherever we can. Um, and we have our first pieces of planning permission already through to build passive house, strongly eco-friendly homes across the city. But it's also important to remember that this is about reducing homelessness too. I've got a picture here of some of the modular homes that we've built um, in partnership with Hill. I, I don't know if anyone from Alia is on the call, but also want to give a big shout out to Alia for the work they've done in modular homes too. And to thank everybody who was donated to Cambridge Street Aid. Since that's been set up, that's raised many thousands of pounds to help the homeless. And it's all just through people donating a few pounds at donation points or on their phone or through Just Giving. And again, that work, and you'll see a pattern here, that is happening in partnership. So much of this is already happening in partnership across our city. Lewis, could you um, move on to the next slide, please? And we're going to need to, it's a slightly busy slide, I do apologize for that, um, but I think it's one of those ones that is quite useful and we share the slides afterwards for you to have. Um, we're going to need to keep working together. Um, we're starting a quite a significant um, transformation programme. When I was thinking about becoming leader, and you'll have seen this if you heard a couple of the interviews I did after um, group elected me as their candidate for leader of the city council, the next years are going to be tough. We are going to have to work in partnership. As a council, we're going to have to think very carefully about how we do things as well as we possibly can to support our whole city. And we are absolutely going to have to do that together. We're going to have to do that in a way that listens to our whole community. And I've got a real thing that that should be our whole community and not just those that shout the loudest because, and many of you in this room are going to be able to help us to reach the people who do not shout loudly. And we'd love to talk more about that. So this is very much, as it says in that little blue box on the right, working hand in hand as staff and communities to put people at the heart of everything we do, creating a prosperous, sustainable and fair future for everyone in Cambridge. Now, I know that's slightly management speaky, but it is really important. And I think it, that sense of working hand in hand, that sense of putting people in Cambridge at the centre and that whatever our future is, we're gonna to work together to make that prosperous for everyone. People talk about just transition, that's part of that, sustainable and fair. And that's the aims of our transformation programme. So Lewis, if we just take it onto the next slide, um, we will be doing that as much as possible in as many ways as we can possibly think of to engage as many people as we can in conversations. So please do look out for engagement events, workshops, conversations, briefing events. We will also be doing the same thing internally with our staff because we want to do this as a whole council together. So just a little bit about the um, transformation programme. Partnership is going to be absolutely key. I'm a member, as I know Lewis is, of the Cooperative Party as well as the Labour Party. Cooperation and genuine partnership is very much at the heart of what I see in the next few years being about. And I look forward to working with a lot of you more on that as we go through into the next years. They will be tough, but I know we can do things together. So at that, I'm going to pass back on to Lewis. He's going to talk about the um, naughty subject of money. Lewis, um, over to you. So I, I've got two sections to cover. And if people do uh, want to ask a question, then uh, do add it in the chat. We'll, of course, take hands up um, for other questions and I'll uh, answer the four questions we got in writing. So I, th I think many of you on the call are pretty well aware of what we do. Um, but if we just look around at um, some of the challenges that we've got, um, 
I, I mentioned that um, in net terms, we were £7.5 million worse off than uh, the government was expected to fund us um, because they told us that we needed to do everything that it took. Um, and our excellent council team did that. Um, so they have effectively only uh, allowed um, two items in terms of their funding for gov from government this year. Uh, I think we might get a small amount of business rates and we we'll may get a certain amount of um, uh, help with things like homelessness, but it's very small amount of what we do. So, and you will imagine, and we've got to be thinking ahead, and it was interesting the point made about transport, um, that car parks are not uh, used as much as they were. And similarly, we do need to think ahead about reducing them further. So, and that is, it's no secret that that's been part of our income. So we, we are here describing uh, the whole range of services. Um, here is the, where the money comes from. And if you just look here, uh, and we just sort of take out the housing benefit part of it, because that's largely money that we pass on to people who need it. We just look at the rest of the, the pie chart. Um, the council uh, gets uh, a large chunk of its income, um, over a third of it from fees and charges and income. We get a significant amount, as you'll see here, from both um, commercial property and actually what we earn from property, thanks to the good stewardship of councils going back, uh, running the city for 30, 50 years, is actually greater. Uh, it seems hard to believe in a way, but it's greater than council tax. But clearly, council tax does need to, um, does, does matter. We've got, we do get government grants for specific purposes, but essentially our flexible income um, has now been reduced to um, business rates, um, 5.6 million here, but we collect about 110 million uh, in business rates for the government um, and then the, the council tax. So unavoidably, we need to increase council tax. Um, other commercial initiatives raise money and we, we've got other small ways of raising money. But, but essentially, that is the, the zone that limits how much we've got. And we are a destination as well as a, a provider of services to you as our residents. So if you just look at some of the big, um, the big areas of spending here, uh, a number of those benefit not just Cambridge, and, but they benefit uh, our neighbours. Um, a, a significant cultural offer, the reopening of the corn exchange and our swimming pools, um, the continuation of community centres, um, car parks and it obviously that's a, a biggish budget but it's also uh, an area that funds um, some nighttime bus services quite a lot of local initiatives um, on transport and a very valuable community safety team and a partnership with the the police um, um, we will uh, i think be having a briefing for all councillors shortly on a proposed um, grafton centre uh, front shop in terms of somewhere where the police will be visible. Uh, we've been defending uh, the city and its needs for policing in the future, irrespective of plans for a Milton police station. A whole range of central services, um, just collecting the money, running good elections, an increasing amount of funding that we've put into climate change, um, clearly having a high quality of recycling and environmental health. In our environmental health team have been stunning during COVID. They have uh, helped keep this city safe, working with the university and all sorts of others. Housing, because in addition to rent, rents paying for the bulk of the cost of housing, uh, of our council housing, um, we've got a significant budget. Um, we've spent over a million more on uh, street homelessness and homelessness budgets um, than the government and our previous budgets in the last year. Planning, because we take the future of the city seriously, and we do need to um, uh, catch up a bit on some of the planning applications, and we've been, our planning team's been working on hard on that, open spaces and so on. So that's what, what we've been doing. But, but we do have, as Anna mentioned, um, a tough challenge, and these are the saving levels, and this is, Effectively, by 26-27, we've got to operate 
with £7.5 million less money per year. So that is a major challenge. Um, we will be bringing forward our budget um, around Christmas time. Um, we will be working to become a more efficient council, but there's, there are going to be ways that we will need to reduce spending simply to balance the budget. So our net budget uh, in an overall £100 million spending council um, on our non-housing uh, council housing is about 20 million. So this is a challenge, but I know a lot of the organisations on this call have also had challenges as a result of COVID. And that was why Anna talked about how we're going to need to improve the way that we work with the community and other organisations. But it is a financial challenge and we will be rising to that. And whilst I may not be leader, I will be contributing to that, looking at our capital budget and supporting the next leader and Mike Davey, who's our um, high quality lead on um, finance. A few words about planning and transport, and I'm very happy and keen to answer questions um, that Jeremy Fisher and uh, James have, have asked, James uh, from Cambridge Past, Present and Futures. But um, I'm not trying to evade things, but in the time between now and 7.30, um, I think we need to cover a wide range of topics after I finish. So there are specific engagement events and I think we should be able to put some of those dates into the chat. So um, I'm proud of the team that we've got. Um, I think we've got an excellent partnership with South Cambridgeshire. Um, and please do uh, take an interest if you already haven't um, in uh, our joint plan, because it has got as much to do with tackling uh, the, the climate emergency and uh, making our city a better fairer dynamic city um, as anything else we do so uh, so there is a consultation it started uh, either by social media or if you just look on our website working with south cambridge you'll see i hope accessible documents with very clear questions it's effectively an early draft document uh, this is a bit of a busy slide but in part it it, it actually uh, evidences that in the background, although we don't talk a lot about donor economics, we recognise that there is a finite capacity uh, that we have to work in within our resources and available uh, environmental capacity within Cambridge and Greater Cambridge. So uh, that does mean that we have to look to improve uh, our chalk streams and the CAM. It does mean that we have to, with South Cambridge, to do a lot more on biodiversity. And it does mean us thinking about adapting of having more trees. Um, we've been planting a, uh, a series of 2000 trees, as, as Anna has mentioned, and we've improved significantly the tree cover. And there's a lot more to do on that. But I, I think that donut economics evidences the need to link tackling the climate emergency with the just transition and keeping our city an equal one. So. Here are just some of the summaries. This overhead evidences that effectively the, the new plan is a supplement on the existing plan, which already did talk with South Cambridge about roughly 35,000 homes. So this one, the plan does envisage the faster growth of North Stow and Water Beach. It adds uh, Cambridge East proposals. It uh, gives more detail about what is already an existing project to develop the area of northeast Cambridge near Cambridge North Railway Station. Um, and uh, Camborne is also uh, due for extra homes. But so th there's talk about, I don't know, uh, just overgrown Cambridge. And clearly, some of you on this call will have different views. But we do need to uh, deliver affordable housing. We do need to be. Uh, a sustainable economy. Um, we do need to focus on uh, net zero as being our target and not by the government's loose target of 2050. So we need to have the much stronger climate policies that are in the new plan, as well as the greater commitments to biodiversity. Um, and yet looking after the CAM and the chalk streams 
looking to extend the tree cover, including um, in South Cambridgeshire adjacent to the city, valuing the fen environment to the north so that we're looking to um, make significant gains in biodiversity and retaining the high quality of the place that we live in and that we're so passionate about. So please do take part in the events. Um, I remember events like the Gil the event in the Corn Exchange, correction, um, where literally people did pictures and we do need at this stage to have what is an extra engagement with the public. So um, do take part. And similarly, there's a separate engagement underway by the Great Cambridge Partnership. Um, and um, th there will be people, people on this call again with different views, but I do regard us uh, in the absence of a metro, which was never uh, going to be sustained and didn't have a route to market. Um, we do need to do two things. We need to enable people to get in and out of the wider area into Cambridge, and we need to come up with solutions to the excess congestion in the city. So, uh, and we need to continue to persuade government to invest, not just in East West Rail and Cambridge South Station, but you'll see on this overhead um, the the ambition of a new station to the east of Cambridge. I've long believed that quite a number of the problems to the east of Cambridge will be much assisted if we get uh, investment in rail. And when we uh, secure the investment for east-west rail, we're also um, having the ambition to take that railway to the North Sea. So it, it matters to us, not just that investment, that, but that we continue to get investment in rail. So the stats aren't different, but um, there is in the consultation before Christmas, which will continue next summer, a commitment to the challenge of Cambridge. We are not going to raise the funding that we need for bus services to be reliable and for continuing to invest in cycling and walking um, if we don't have the opportunity of a charge, um, in my view. Um, it will not be uh, welcomed by everybody, but we do need to have completely hypothecated funding if we're going to have the level of bus services that bring equality and can help mean that we have got um, a network that goes well out from Cambridge and we will work with Nick Johnson as mayor. He's committed to improving bus services way beyond Greater Cambridge um, and we will support him in reviewing what his options are in relation to increasing competition in the, in the bus service zone um, as well as increasing the funding. But franchising of that area will not raise the funding that we need to tackle Cambridge's bus system and, and enable there to be good systems for South Cambridgeshire pupils and others. So, so do look out um, on the Greater Cambridge Partnership website for their Making Connections consultation. Um, we need, as a city, to, to clean the air. Um, we've seen sometimes, including during lockdown, what it can be. We're already back to excessive congestion at peak times, particularly in the south of the city. You just have to look at the daily uh, updates from Cambridge uh, County Council's travel team um, to see exactly how much a uh, gridlock we are already experiencing. And sad to say, we will have more during the Christmas um, shopping and sales period. So, so I'm very happy to take any questions. So if people do have any questions on what I've covered or uh, with stuff I haven't covered um, that you want to ask us tonight, do add them in the chat or use your um, opportunity to stick your hand up soon. Finally, I'm just going to hand over before I host the questions uh, to Anna if you want to just add a few final thoughts and then yeah, we'll so get off of the session for, for questions. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be brief, um, but there's two reasons for this. First of all, because I absolutely couldn't allow this to go um, all the way through without saying a huge thank you to Lewis for all the work that he's done as leader. Um, he's been an inspirational leader. He's been a great support to all of us, both as councillors and beyond. Incredibly big shoes to fill. And um, if I can be half as good a leader as Lewis has been, then I'll be really very pleased with my achievement. Um, 
I've also chosen an image, which I know um, if Sam and Alex, if you're on the call, I suspect you don't like this image very much with you hugging the food here, but it's a really important one um, for, very, for several reasons. I think it sums up a lot of what we've been talking about today. First of all, this image is about food justice. It's from just before the pandemic, probably only a few weeks before um, we started to be concerned in a really serious way about COVID. Um, because we just put some funding into a central food distribution hub for the city. And that was there to um, ensure that we had a more sustainable way of dealing with waste, but also to ensure that food got to people who needed it. Um, so it symbolises our commitment to food justice. It symbolises our commitment to sustainability. Um, it reminds us we've got nine years we want to get to net zero by 2030. We've got nine years. And we can't do that if all we do is think about solutions for the well-off. And something like the work we're doing in food justice is one of the ways that we can ensure that this is for our whole city, because it has to be for everybody. It must be something that we can support across our whole community. But I also wanted to show this because it's, it's a good symbol to me of genuine partnership in the face of all the difficulties that we are facing. During the pandemic, the work that took place in partnership I thought was quite amazing. And I really want to pay particular tribute to Debbie Kay and her team for the work that they did on the council to help support that. And it was a real genuine piece of partnership working. Council didn't back off. Neither did we say, we're doing everything, we're in charge, we're the experts. On the contrary, we were sitting around a virtual table talking about how we could help to solve the problems that our residents were facing. We worked together, we've listened to each other, we've supported each other, we've brought our strengths. And I think that's something, it's, it's really important that that's what partnership is going to be about. It's not about us backing off and just saying, well, over to you guys now, that's it, bye. It's about us working together in a way that supports our whole community. Because if we're going to create a sustainable and inclusive city, then the team effort that's summed up in this picture is really very important. So that was the, what I wanted to leave you with. We now, I think, are going to go on to questions and really looking forward to hearing what you have to say, so thank you. Okay. So if people have got a question, by all means, um, ask. I'm just going to use my double technology because I can't actually read the answers uh, to the questions, earlier questions that I received otherwise. Um, and people might have noticed in the chat there was a, a couple of responses um, uh, and there was also a couple of questions. So um, uh, as Anna mentioned, uh, and showed we have, I think, together with um, Emmaus, I think we're talking about 21 pods have been installed so far. I think it might be more than that now. Um, might be um, 28 uh, in total. But but that, that really has um, helped a number of the people there um, to actually achieve a much more stability. So several of the people who moved into the pods have actually taken on jobs. Um, assisted by it takes a city but also it was good to see Alan Oswald say that one of them is volunteering at Cambridge Reuse so um, so I know that um, I was going to answer the questions um, that we got from Jeremy Fisher um, briefly from but I'll give Jeremy your full written answer because you are asked two questions um, one is an issue which I, I know that your residents have, have had a, a significant concern about, and that's about electric scooters and these, uh, or electric bikes, and these take quite a lot of forms in the city. Um, so we've got um, quite a range of uh, different uh, items, and the mayor's got some input because of the red ones, which are apparently the only ones that are wholly legal, um, have got a speed limiter on it. but. I, I, I do think as city councillors, we will be looking at this issue. Um, and I did raise it with Adam Gallup, who's the recently appointed commander for the south, south half of uh, Cambridgeshire. Um, 
we've we've effectively got Jeremy to look at how we can enforce it. But uh, I live near Midsummer Common. I see excess speeds. I think we will need to look at um, seeing if we can limit the parts of the path system that, that uh, can be used by um, fast vehicles. I would love there to be ability to say, right, no one can go more than 15 miles an hour. Um, but but we, we were very happy to meet up, Jeremy, to look, look at this and consider what we may do, particularly um, on our parks. I think we've got a wider issue of pedestrian and older people's safety. Um, we've got issues of the cut-throughs being abused, not just by electric um, two-wheelers, but also mopeds, some of whom happen to be in the fast food delivery, fast delivery service. Um, and that is a challenge. So um, the previous police commander, James Sutherland, was really good on um, road safety and cycling safety, uh, the, the safety of cyclists as well as pedestrians. And we, we, we are determined to follow that up. Um, so do, do by all means get in touch, Jeremy, and I will provide you with the fuller answer. Um, you also raised the issue of uh, water abstraction, and clearly that's a central issue in the local plan discussion. Um, uh, Katie Thornborough has played a, a, her part in the, um, the work of the, the forum that's produced um, a very clear statement that we have to increase the supply of water into the chalk streams and the camp. So we, we, we are going to, as I've said, uh, take this seriously and there will be a wider discussion about other water supply um, that, uh, and, and the limits that we have. So um, we can't waste water like we've done. We have to look at the whole issue of, of that. Um, and it is critical if we're going to improve our biodiversity, which we are committed to, that the CAM water quality, the CAM environmental quality and the quality of chalk streams um, is, is, is addressed. Um, it was a similar theme that uh, James raised from Cambridge PPF. Um, so you also asked James about the limits to growth. And clearly there is a debate to be had, including with organisations like Anglian Water and about others, about exactly how much capacity um, there is um, there. Um, so... Um, Similarly, there'll be a much bigger discussion, James, um, on the local plan from uh, at the other events. Um, so we do know we, we've we provided a lot of evidence, but there may be others that have got different view about the evidence that we're considering and evidence uh, that we should uh, consider as well. So that is the opportunity of that consultation. And you also, James, asked an interesting question about what's the council's role of working with the voluntary organization. I, I mean, I, I believe that we, we treat everybody as equal partners. So, um, and that our work is collaborative. So we're, yeah, we just believe that we have to draw on the strengths of other organizations. Um, and you raised it a couple of years ago. Um, and um, by all means, uh, if you want to come in. So I don't know, before I take any other questions, if you want to come back, Jeremy, on the issues you raised, um, or and then I'll take James. So, Jeremy, do you want to come in on either of those issues? Uh, yes. Could I could I just uh, say thank you very much, Lewis, for your answers uh, on the cycling. I think yes, it, it does require a discussion, it, as I think you indicated. It's it is a complicated issue involving you know the police, the council, residents, and everybody else. And there's a lot of um, sort of we must do something about this, and not an awful lot of doing something about this. So I, I think. If you were able to convene discussion involving certainly the Friends of Midsummer Common, which I represent, uh, and anyone else who's interested, and I know there are many people, that, that would be very helpful. Uh, on the water, the, the only point I just wish to make is a, a comment or a note in the um, Greater Cambridge Chalk Stream project says, the need for a reliable supply of clean chalk groundwater is a necessity without which there is no chalk stream. Um, then it goes on to say that reducing and uh, reducing abstraction and managing water more sustainably is essential, but outside the scope of this document. So, I mean, it, it, I mean, there's some excellent ideas about how to reduce abstraction, but without actually having more supply, then it's sort of the whole thing seems slightly pointless. So, I'm 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 happy to convene with Anna or 
my successor a, uh, a discussion. I do think we need to have the police in the room for that first point there, Jeremy. Um, uh, I've been training planners for 17 years. I wasn't a planner before I started. I understand them. And sometimes they will say this is a document covering X and clearly on the whole issue of biodiversity and water supply it all overlap. So I, I do think our planners take the need to um, improve the biodiversity of our water system. Um, we, yeah, as people have seen either swimming in it or enjoying it during the difficult times that we've had, um, the value of it has, has been even more obvious than it was before. So we are, we are committed to this. And then we do need to engage with the Environment Agency and Cambridge Water and others. Um, so um, uh, uh, both of the issues you've raised uh, have many authors. And I, I think we, yeah, yeah, you, 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 we will, I'll, I'll ask uh, Katie Thornbrook to get in touch with you. I think, Katie, are you on the call? I don't know, um, but so Katie has certainly been leading on um, uh, on, on that issue. Katie, hi. The um, the chalk stream report that you refer to was um, we had a, the city council had a, put a funding towards it, and it looked at the overground situation regarding the chalk streams, and we, it comes up with projects um, covering about 75% of the chalk streams, all of the ones in um, Greater Cambridgeshire. Um, and it's really important to improve the, the physical aspects of the chalk streams so that they're in the best possible condition to keep the streams running um, smoothly and to help for in flood conditions. But it's also, we very much want to work with communities to um, get involved, but also to record the biodiversity that we've got. And we really do need to try and improve the um, uh, environmental protection of the chalk streams. They're just city and county uh, wildlife reserves at the moment, and we really need to work to give them um, greater protection. Thank you. I, 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 and thank you for that. But of course, uh, while you continue to build more houses, there is more abstraction. And that is the, you know, uh, you could, if we had a new reservoir, but you can't magic up new reservoirs. So, you know, so what do we do in the yeah. meantime? Well, there's, there's a lot of organisations have come together to form Water Resources East. And we are um, listening and uh, contributing and working with them to find out what they can do. But they're the... They, it's a it's a huge infrastructure problem, as you can imagine, and they we're hoping that Water Resources East will um, next year um, have a consultation to tell us what they're planning. But they are, I think, the main thing is considering the water the reservoirs, but they also need to reduce um, the fifteen percent we lose through leakage and also working with the farmers to reduce usage and looking at uh, commercial use as well. They're looking at reducing the amount of water that's um, sent to the Thames, um, uh, um, the Thames Gateway. I think 2 million litres is sent to Thames and there's plans to stop that and we would retain that in, in, um, for Cambridgeshire. Um, but also they need, they're looking at shorter term bringing in water from the West. But we should hear more in the new year. Okay, that's very, very interesting. Thank you very much. No, we will, I mean, I do think we will, um, it, and my successors will make a commitment that we are not going to degrade the chalk streams and that indeed that they're de over degraded already, Jeremy. Um, so, um, and it has to be a partnership with South Cambridgeshire. Um, so the, some of those powers are outside our immediate control, but, but you, the, the um, challenge that you can't put all of this growth uh, forward without sorting that out is accepted, okay? Um, um, and uh, just to add into that, actually, I was, I was busy typing away to see if I could find the exact quote from the local plan consultation or pre-consultation documents, I should say, but there's a very clear challenge in that that says, this is predicated on getting the water right. This is predicated on not further depleting our chalk streams. Then the water companies have to work with us to find another solution. 
because I think we probably all agree in this room that the chalk streams are vulnerable and we must do things to support that. So there's a clear challenge to the water companies in the local plan. They must come up with a solution before we start authorizing that house building. So I'll try and find you the kind of, the, the, the reference to that. It's not quite phrased in that way, it's phrased in, but you can see that's what it's saying. Okay, that's appreciated, thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Anna. So um, before I ask Andrew Lim to line us up three or four questions, um, James, did you want to come back on um, my initial points on on your uh, questions, um, either on the uh, your view about whether or not we take the voluntary sector seriously enough, or um, on the local plan more generally, James? Yeah, uh, thanks, Lewis. Uh, thanks for asking my uh, questions. Taking the local plan one first, I think the point I'm making we, we touched on the water, but we've had twenty years of a very rapid growth in in Great Cambridge. Uh, and most of us in this room are grappling with the consequences of that, whether that's increased pollution, increased inequality, increased biodiversity loss, increased traffic congestion, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's sort of the, the logical argument that going even more rapid will solve the problems doesn't, you know, it doesn't really stack up. And there's not really very much evidence that it that it will. And I think that's the, you know. I would encourage those of you who aren't engaging today in the local plan consultation to to really have a look at that and, and think about whether, you know, actually, given what we've had over the last 20 years and what the consequences of that have been, whether more of the same for another 10 or 15, 20 years is, is going to, where's that going to get us really? And I, I think that's the, the challenge, not just around water. I think it's, I think it's around a whole range of issues. And then the, the issue around the voluntary sector, I think to some extent, you know, the COVID pandemic and the, the necessity to work together with the voluntary sector probably has changed the way in which the council views the voluntary sector and how it works with them um, from where we were in pre-pandemic situations. So probably I'm a bit more encouraged that the council is taking the voluntary sector more seriously. I think the question really and the concern is just that, you know, as you outlined with your £7 million reduction in budgets is that, as we've seen in other parts of the country, there becomes a greater reliance on the voluntary sector to pick up services which previously were supported by or delivered by the local authority. And I think, you know, that might become somewhat inevitable here too, but, you know, it, it's the role of the council then becomes in how it can support the voluntary sector to do that rather than just sort of walking away. But also just thinking about small things and cultural change is what I think I talked to you about you know, it was needed within the council and how it thinks about it does things. So as an example, you know, you advertise in the council's magazine, which goes out to all householders, you know, for volunteers for council led projects, but could you instead just advertise volunteering more generally and so I suppose people to a range of different organizations and initiatives so that we all benefit, not just those initiatives delivered by the council. Yeah, well, I think it's a, it's a fair challenge. I mean, I, I can't commit my successors, but we've got currently we fund um, a million pounds in community grants a year and seven hundred thousand pounds in grants related to homelessness and supporting rough sleepers. And I, I, I do think that they will be one of the last things we look at um, um, because we do recognise that partnership. Um, um, uh, our chief, new chief executive um, is on the call, and maybe Robert, you could say a word um, to introduce yourself to some of the people um, that may not know you as well so far. Um, but but we do see Cambridge Matters as having that opportunity. So um, I don't know, Robert, if by way of introduction you might be able to uh, maybe respond positively to James' request that if we're going to do a, a volunteering piece. Um, in the next Cambridge Matters that we effectively try to get um, a broader range. Um, as people will know that we've had a volunteer fair and I thought these those events worked well. Um, they also network groups. So I think having one of those um, next year will also be a great opportunity for the voluntary or sector. So Robert, do you just briefly want to introduce yourself and um, uh, see if you might be able to uh, respond a bit to James question. Thanks Lewis and it's a really good point James and I, I think um, we definitely be be up for advertising, publicising, uh, volunteering across 
across Cambridge, across the voluntary sector. I, I think you're right that the role of the council is a uh, as, as providing the supporting and enabling infrastructure for the voluntary sector in Cambridge has become more important during the pandemic from, from what I gather. What Anna actually has told me about her involvement in some of the, the, the setting up of the food hubs and the infrastructure the council provided. And I think you're right, it is a, it's a cultural switch from the council providing grants to what can we do to um, enable, develop, build the capacity and capability of, of the voluntary sector. So um, if you've got any initiatives and you want us to advertise them, it might be too late for the, um, the winter edition, but certainly for the spring edition, we'll, we'll put them in there and we'd be delighted to. So this is our new chief executive and we're very proud that he's joined us um, and he's got a lot of experience of partnership building um, as well as um, interesting ways to fund joint initiatives. So um, as well as uh, having the management skill to take on a significant and very talented team of uh, employees. So um, I don't know, Andrew, if, if you if just... I could um, yeah. come in on that just briefely as well. It's um, be nice... You probably know each other, but it'd be really interesting to connect up if people don't know um, Mark from CCVS. I think he's on the call and Mark has done some CCVS has done some great work in partnership with the council to support volunteering across the voluntary sector. So we've had what most people know about are the kind of the big flagship events at the Guildhall, um, like a kind of freshers fair for grown ups. Um, what? people perhaps don't always come across is the other side of that, that work that goes on to really support voluntary organisations that CCVS do so much of. Um, I was really fortunate to be part of an event, I think it was probably 2019, um, where the decision that year was not to do a big fair, but to do a conference that supported the voluntary sector in recruiting and maintaining volunteers. Um, and that was at the voluntary sector's request. So there's lots of really interesting stuff going on and I'm sure it will be great. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, Mark, but I'm sure people would love to connect with you and find out more about that. Um, and Lewis, when you would like to pass back to me, I've got a few things I can say on the mental health question as well. All right, um, thanks, Anna. Now I was gonna, um, I was gonna uh, look at uh, Anthony's question and the issue of mental health and um, I'll pass over to Anna, but I just want to say one thing, and that was when the leaders of the councils got together recently, and we do seek to work together across this bigger geography. Um, uh, one of the biggest areas was uh, the whole area of isolation and people that are not getting adequate support, and it extends into a whole range of issues. It, it, uh, the slightly pejorative term troubled families comes into part of the zone as well. But I think, um, uh, Anna, if you lead off and then maybe Robert, you might want to say something about um, the whole issue of mental health and how we need to work together with others. Yeah, I mean, you took the words right in my mouth at the start of my point there, Lewis, which is, yeah, this is, this is another one of those areas where it's about cooperation. And um, we've got potentially quite a different shape to this region than we had perhaps two years ago. We've got a lot of, um, you know, authorities with similar perspectives and that allows us to work together really effectively. And I think that's gonna be something I want to do. It's something we must do. We must look at where we've got these areas of overlap because if we don't, things fall between the cracks. Um, so one part of the answer is we aren't the core mental health services provider but we do need to work in partnership with those organisations that are because we've got things we can feed into that. Um, there are other things as well that it's worth considering there. We've got our single equality scheme and a major priority of that is that we ensure that people with mental health issues are supported properly by our frontline services. So we're going to always keep a very close eye on that. We also provide community grants to mental health charities for products, projects that are really seeking to reduce social or economic inequalities, particularly. And Lewis mentioned those issues around loneliness and inclusion. That's that's very important to us. Um, so it's really about partnerships. It's about the community grants 
And also there's the training side of things. So we're trying to support our council staff to support service users in the best way we can. And we're also running um, workshops for our staff as well that are about um, supporting them and their families and their work with each other. So we're trying to do quite a bit. We're not the main provider of those services, but we are trying to do a lot. And then there's other things that feed into it as a site, as, as part of the bigger picture. So the well-being that comes more open spaces, the well-being that comes from the um, active lifestyle activities that we do, the work we do to promote social inclusion, to um, help people avoid isolation. Now, those aren't going to deal with the really kind of core needs for counselling, for mental health support, but we hope they form part of the wider picture. So that's a very short answer, but it really is about working together as authorities to try and do what we can. And again, in partnership with our community and voluntary sector as well. And, and, and I, I noticed there were several related comments in the chat from Mark and also Tariq about um, how this will work on the bigger geography. So I hope you've, there's been a change of uh, thought at the County Council in tackling a number of issues, including in the inequality zone. And um, if there's ways that we can raise issues at the combined authority, I see your point there, Mark, that you've raised. But so I think um, we, we do want to work with the combined authority there that we do have some of the worst um, off areas in terms of income um, across the county but but and there is a lot to be gained from us jointly working with um, Peterborough and with parts of Fenland because we've got some of the same challenges don't know if you want to come in Robert on that or um, maybe just to add Lewis uh, you and Anna have, have given a lot of detail I think the other big opportunity is through the emerging integrated care system where the health that you know our health colleagues really are now looking at and see the value of prevention well-being and intervening earlier so if there is a north and a south integrated care system uh, across Cambridgeshire and Peterborough what they really want to do is join up at a far more granular place level that is a better reflection of how people who live in the city understand their community and I think that could depending on how the, the, the NHS delivers services and works in partnership, it can be a big ship to turn around sometimes. But I think that could be a great opportunity for the voluntary sector to get more involved actively. It, it, in an ideal world, I think some of the, um, the new um, levy on um, national insurance contributions would be directly channeled into... Um, preventative activity which I think they recognize is best delivered by people who know those communities best and that's probably some of the organizations in the room we can we can hope for the best and let's see what happens and that... also I've noticed that Jackie Hansen has put a note in the chat saying that she'd be happy to be involved in any discussions around volunteering funding publicity and promotion and capacity building um, if you don't know Jackie she's one of our um key officers in this area so um welcome to jackie and thanks for um raising that and if you don't know jackie please do connect with her i promise you you won't regret it so we'll leave the chat up for five minutes at the end there does anybody else want to come in on the sort of broad brush of what the council's doing on inequalities or in that zone or um on homelessness or housing um, I'll come back to planning and see also if Katie can come back further, James, on some of your points there. Any, any, or, or does anybody have any question that they want to ask about the council services? If you stick up your hand, I'll be able to see. Um, okay. Um, uh, so Chris Jenkin. Um, uh, who uh, has been a very effective leader on the area of homelessness. Chris. I just wanted to say thank you um, to Lewis and council colleagues. It's been a great partnership working since, um, since COVID, which has been, um, I think it's changed how we work together, um, as someone just said, which has been very good. Um, and um, 
a little cry out for for land you know we're We've got um, six more modular homes built, ready for land. Um, announcement due uh, very soon on that. But um, um, we're always on the lookout for further plots of land that we can develop with more modular housing to provide opportunities for our sleepers to have somewhere to call home. And uh, very much appreciate the working together so far on these things. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think it, I think it takes a city. You've done a phenomenal job. I mean, you helped us run Scholars House on. Piston Road, you've provided a huge amount of support. So um, keep challenging and we will, um, I mean, be partly because the evidence is there that people who've moved into the pods uh, have often discovered a lot more about themselves and um, taken more control over their lives and uh, found it more rewarding. And it's probably also just worth adding, of course, we've opened um, the Crossways project for the winter. Um, and so we're about to put out a little something to say that no one needs to sleep rough this winter. Um, the, the project is currently half full. Um, if anyone is on the street rough sleeping uh, with nowhere to go, there is a place for them to go. It's a very different project this year. Ensuite accommodation, 24-7 support, not about having to go in and come out when it's a bit warmer, etc. Um, we're trying to push the message out so that no one um, needs to be out on the street. And we, we, know we want to encourage the wider public to realise that. There is, there is at the current time a place a place to go for people to get help and not just to stay there for the winter, but to be helped to move on as we did with um, the project during the pandemic to help people move on into further accommodation and to get on, onto a proper housing journey. And, and just for assurance, the council will continue a higher level of funding for this. Um, um, so what we were helped temporarily, but not for long. Uh, Peter, you want to come in? I assume you mean Peter Gotham. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. You, you, I'm involved with Abbey People and Abbey Ward, um, as you're aware. Uh, that uh, includes some of the poorest areas in Cambridge. Uh, and um, there are two issues uh, that I'd like to, to mention. One is I'm pleased uh, that you're uh, interested in uh, or have an ambition to improve the rail uh, out to the east. Uh, and the second is particularly relative to the development on the border of Abbey Ward, uh, with, which I think is un, under the jurisdiction of South Cams, um, that it would be really um, unfortunate, shall we say, if, if Abbey didn't uh, benefit from some of the resource uh, going into that area, whether by Section 106 or whatever. Well, yeah, they're both uh, they're both important points, and clearly, yeah, you, you've got one of the most difficult roads in the city, and Newmarket Road in terms of transport. So, um, but but yeah, we've uh, we're not in. A, I don't think the uh, Great Cambridge Partnership can really come up with a better solution in the short or early term. But I do think championing um, having a station closer into East Cambridge is part of that, along with. Um, the solution there. So no, we um, we recognise the, uh, the a the work of Abbey people and the fact that you're a community with a voice, and that is a way that we can really make a difference. Um, but also just uh, that there is um, a need to continue to target resources um, and address issues like the East Barmel Centre, which has been unresolved for over a decade in terms of 1.5 million pounds of promised county council funding. So. Um, it, yeah, we, we're, we're grateful for all of the work that you do there. Um, thanks, uh, Chris. Anybody? Uh, uh, Peter and Chris. Um, is there anybody else wants to come in on that? I, I don't know, uh, James, I was going to get a bit more input from Katie about the, the local plan, but do you want to, to say a, a couple of sentences there, James? Um, and then I'll see if I'm assuming Katie's still on the call. Hi, Katie. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, just to repeat the question, really, which is basically, you know, what's what's your answer to the argument that, you know, rapid growth has caused a lot of the problems that we're all trying to deal with? How is more rapid growth going to solve them? Okay, well, thanks, Katie. Could you come back on that one? Well, yes, I think the government's aim is for sustainable de development. And that's protecting um, it, the environment. It's, it's building for the future generations. And it, it builds on the peer of, of economics, um, environmental and social, these three pillars. 
the in, in economic pillar includes the economy or growth and also infrastructure. And it's absolutely clear that growth has got ahead of the other very important things. So it, it's not it's not been sustainable. And we, we've resulted in, in traffic and massive congestion and pollution as you've set out. Going forward, the, the next local plan won't be actually in place until uh, 2024 at the earliest. And the, the policies we're looking at to really try to deal with um, the climate issues and the uh, biodiversity and making and really focusing on making sure the infrastructure is in place um, and backs up the local plan. So without a really comprehensive transport strategy, it won't, we can't actually deal a really deal with a really good local plan. They have to go hand in hand. So we need to work closely with um, the combined authority to do that. And, and it needs to be um, either in place before or um, along with any further homes. So we've got a long way to go and we've got an awful lot to sort out before the next local plan is signed off. So, so I think, yeah, I mean, the, it, the local plan is out to consultation and um, this is an early dialogue. It's not required, but we, we do obviously uh, need to uh, address it. And, and you know, James, that we also just need to address the fact of the sustainability and the climate change impacts of what's already been in the in the past plan. So um, I, I, we would just wish that the government had some guidance for us um, and that we are not stuck with um, five years of development if they don't intervene. That is going to be um, a greater burden than it needs to be in that um, new development going up now should be meeting um, much tougher requirements. Um, any questions anybody wants to pick up? I, I, I know that there's uh, quite a range of really vital charities that meet the needs of disabled people and older people, and some of your um, uh, points have been addressed, but I don't know if any of the charities that haven't had their issue uh, addressed did want to raise a point. Or anybody else? This is your moment if you want to ask a question on anything about the council. Lewis, there was a question from Liz Taylor about what work we do with East Cams. Um, so we, we um, it was a bit before my time, our time, but we, I know that in the work that was put together on the city deal and Councillor Bick and others made a major contribution on that, that we, we did, for instance, uh, try to create a city deal that included East Cambridgeshire, but they decided not to be part of that. We work closely with uh, East Cambridgeshire on uh, transport uh, in terms of some of the issues that we need to address going out past uh, Marshall, then out and further out. So... Um, uh, we yeah and 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 that that partnership would would benefit the east of our city as as well as areas like Bottisham um, and further out towards Newmarket. So um, no, we work we work well as leaders on the uh, on the combined authority, but but I think we could do better. Um, so I think um, we do need to build the cooperation through the county council and and others. We just in a way, we've got a lot more local government than, than we might necessarily need, um, partly because each time we get new funding, we have to have new structures imposed um, in the deals with government. So we try there. Any other questions you can spot there, Andrew? Um, well, uh, Tariq had asked one generally about working with um, the combined authority and county to tackle uh, poverty and inequality, but I think there's been some response and discussion to that, unless there's anything else you wanted to add. Yeah, I mean, I do think that that is moving up the zone. And I think I, I do pay tribute to the new administration at the County Council. I think they've looked at issues that haven't been looked at. And there's, um, it, it's not easy with the limited funding, but on adult care and on, also on child care, there's some major improvements to be achieved on targeting there. Any other points people want to raise? Um, We'll obviously um, answer, share the uh, fuller answers that, that we've got, uh, Jeremy. I'm very happy to be in touch and to en enable there to be a, 
a discussion about the issue of um, electric vehicles and generally about just the crossover onto um, pedestrian areas that we've got up there. Um, I hope that people who've got any comments on transport and on the plan will engage with the events there and councillors will be on those calls and in those events and listening. Um, any more questions? I don't want to hold you from the rest of your evening, but we're very happy to answer. Anybody want to just unmic and say something? I'd like to, Lewis. Good. Uh, Lucy Walker, who's your you chair of the trustees at the museum. Yes, I am. I, I wasn't actually going to mention the museum, but um, I, we would like to welcome any initiatives to um, get people to into the museum, all the new residents, everything. But what I wanted to say just now is to thank you very much and to um, really echo what Anna Smith uh, said. You've been a great leader. Um, and one final question to exercise your mind, which is we have so much money coming into Cambridge in, into the university, into the big corporations, into all around, how are we going to get that distributed and dispersed so that more people can benefit from it? Well, I think there's a big, an interesting challenge that we do, we already get, and we did during COVID get a lot of generosity, all of that area about food justice, um, the involvement of some of the biggest corporations in Cambridge. Um, but I think there's a lot more that we could do about a three-way partnership. So um, uh, it's not simple, but, but the amount of wealth, just if you just took the sale of arm shares at a certain point in time, um, and the number of people in Cambridge that became semi-millionaires, there's, I think, yeah, we, we, we are in a position to try and, uh, do that but it I, I think the, the a bit like the point that uh, James made about well, where does the council fit in when you've got initiatives like Cambridge Commons Cambridge 2030 Cambridge sustainable food Cambridge carbon footprint um, uh, it takes a city that we do I think we what we will be doing uh, Lucy will and uh, 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 my successor will be doing is focusing on those organizations that bridge. So um, we will share with the uh, conclusions of this session um, uh, and the presentation material, um, this work that I mentioned that Transition Cambridge did. And I just really value that in that that shows how organizations link up in the zone of dealing with biodiversity or dealing with homelessness. Um, most of them are already networked. Um, but I do think in uh, us taking the point to people who do have uh, the opportunity as part of their corporate social responsibility to put money back into Cambridge, that, that we, we have got a lot of connections. Um, a lot of them are involved in your organizations one way or another, um, here and there. Um, we are a very rich city, but one that, of, as we all know, has got the, one of the biggest gaps between the top end income earners and others um, in a really high cost housing city. So I, yeah, there's, there's, there's a battle to be won there. It's not a battle. I think there's an opportunity to be landed there over, over time. And there is, there has been some huge generosity um, from a lot of um, people who've shown philanthropy. Um, and there is people, there are people that could be persuaded to give more. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, yeah, it, it, on this call, there are people who obviously want to get a share and um, the richness of your organization, the Museum of Technology, who operate independently as well as the the, the welcome support the university gives, but puts the other museums on a slightly different footing to yourself. Um, so um, thank you for your kind comments. I, I'm still going to be making my contribution, but there'll be others taking the lead, um, I'm glad to say. Uh, much as I enjoyed and will continue to enjoy the wonderful city we live in.
Um, anything else? Sorry, that was a bit of a self-indulgence. Um, anything else people want to say? We've come to 7.30. Um, we will, uh, assisted by Andrew, pick up any other questions. If you do want to email me on any of the issues that we've covered or something that hasn't been covered, then we will respond. Um, it is a wonderful city we all share. Um, I, I do think over the last 18 months that has been proven um, and we've shown great responsibility in behaving well to each other and looking after people, our neighbours, as well as um, generally keeping our COVID rates lower than elsewhere. Um, we're not out of it. Addenbrooke's, as I've said, is struggling um, and we will continue to focus on that issue as well as others. So. Um, I, I hope you get the opportunity through the local plan and the transport consultations to have your say. Um, you will see the budget proposals that come from the city and from the county and others, um, and do have your say about those. All of our meetings at the council have a public question session um, and other opportunities for input. Um, um, we, we value the fact that we are an open, demanding, high quality environment to live in um, and keep being a voice um, that ensures that as a city it's run well and it's accountable. So thank you for all your inputs. Thank you to our officer team. Thank you to Anna Smith for partnering me in much as deputy leader um, over the years and in responding today and for Katie and for Robert and uh, all of your questions. So I wish you a good evening. Um, and um, we will be doing more of these, I'm sure, and we welcome the dialogue and the challenge. Thank you. Good night, you all. But I'll mm -hmm. leave the chat up. Um, so uh, in the usual way, good night. Um, but if you, if you do want to stay on, we'll leave the chat up for about five minutes if there are links that you want to take. Um, and I know that there's a lot of charities and work, uh, specialists organizations on the call and i hope you benefited but we we haven't forgotten you and we recognized including in the comments about uh, looking after people who are disabled or older people and other different groups within the city that that we do need to think about uh, all of our city um, um, as well as the main focus um, on tackling inequality and on climate change and on homelessness so thank you all I will see you again in a different place and I'll get back to you, Jeremy. Okay.